had a choice to either go the pure and, and natural way, or I could I could sell out and I could do the business deal and and rake in cash that way. And I had to play both. I had to put on both hats because I knew one didn't work without the other. And I've seen a lot of good artists, great artists, um, fall to the wayside. And, uh, and great artists do because they don't treat it as a business. Bradley Parrish is the man who has worn many artistic hats in his life. Most of us link his name with the haunting paintings of wildlife he produces. On a local level, I'm probably more known for the wildlife, especially the wolves. Uh, I, I've been trying to get away from that, that uh, stereotype, the, uh, the wolf man or the, the wolf artist. When people see you doing wolf pieces, they, they expect you 10 years from now to be doing the same type of wolf pieces or doing better wolf pieces. And it's, it's, it's like I, I'm wolfed out. <laughs> People like to put you in a classification, oh, he's a wildlife artist or he's that kind of artist. And when people look at all the different art that I've done, they either, th they either think I'm crazy because I'm doing everything and anything or don't know what I'm doing because I'm doing everything and everything. Painting anything and everything seems to suit Brad Parrish very well. Whether he is working alone in his studio at home or serving his community by working with the class of eager fifth graders at County Line School in Germantown, Wisconsin, on a mural they will long remember. The challenge of, of having them get involved and start painting on this is, is the hard part, but it, it's probably the interesting part. It's something where we're not expecting them to paint really well but to do their best and uh, see where it goes from there. You just try to encourage them all the way through it. And where did his encouragement come from? I remember getting pastels at a very early age and I just took off. I mean, I, I just knew that's what I wanted to do. We've had uh, some paint by number artists in our family and I used to go up to the paint by number sets and just look at the texture of the paint on the canvas and uh, and actually smell the paint. I just thought it was it was cool that it was uh, that someone had done this, but when you walked away, it looked like a completed piece. And I think it was just always in me. It was just a matter of uh, the little things that would pop up that would nurture or, or trigger that that destiny that I think I I was chosen to to pursue in in life. At age 16, his talent was evident. His painting called The Creation of Adam was proof that this self-taught artist had chosen the right career. His list of awards is long and impressive, and the awards recognize work of such variety, it is often hard to believe that the same person produced it all. I won't paint just to paint something that everybody wants. I, mean, I, I have to feel it and, and want to do it, and I think that's reflective in the, in the pieces themselves. As my life changes and as I go through my life, I, I notice in my art too it changes. One thing that doesn't change is his preference for using live models and music for inspiration. When I listened to Les Mis, I knew I had to have a Cosette. So it's like 10 o'clock at night, I'm telling my wife, I gotta paint Cosette. Do you know of, you know, do we know anybody that has a little girl that might you know, fit the bill for Cosette. So we called a friend and said, you know, Brad's just itching to do this piece uh, with, with so-and-so model. And uh, said, sure, puts her bathrobe on her and runs her over. And uh, so I started sketching and painting her that night. Whatever I had going in inside of me, actually flowing through onto the canvas, actually came off really well. Brad's heart is in his work, and this portrait of his wife Kim and their son Andrew demonstrates his feeling for the woman he calls his biggest supporter. It's basically your, your, your spouse that is, is your rock that, that keeps you stable um, or that, that feeds you when you don't eat because you've been working for, for 20 hours on a piece and uh, when you're ready to crash because you can't work anymore. 
You know, she's covering the phone calls. Andrew is in the fifth grade now, and his younger siblings have yet to be the subject of one of their father's paintings. I think that's one of my frustrations right now. I've got so much on my table, so much that I want to do, but yet probably the most important thing to me isn't being done, which is painting my kids. Besides his responsibility to family, he also feels a responsibility for the young artists that will follow. He encourages them to love doing art and to benefit from his experiences and the lessons he has learned. Artists, they don't have unions. There's no Oscars for, I mean, once you finish a masterpiece, you don't have a crowd cheering. I mean, you have, you have self-rewards, and that's, that's all an artist can ask for. But he's got to live, and he's got to take care of a family. And so the perks and the benefits only come if you treat it as a business, and you have to do that. Talent doesn't mean anything unless you know how to use it and where to use it and who to allow to use it. You sell it to an extent, but you're doing it to save the better part of what you want to do and achieve. Bradley Parrish is both an artist and a realist. He skillfully balances fine art and finance. He reminds us that good art is not in the fine details. Good art is often what is invisible to the eye and is seen by the heart. Thank you.